My guest today is Ryder Havedale. Ryder is the CEO and founder of Helios Creators, uh, aiming to revolutionize the music industry, or the streaming industry, I should say, by offering fairer engagement uh, and deeper engagement between artists and fans. Simple as that. Uh, a very noble cause. Welcome to the show, Ryder. Andy, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you here, Ryder. Let's do what we do at the beginning of the show. It would be cool if you could please introduce yourself. You've got a long and fascinating background, I must say. So yeah, just run us through some of the highlights, I suppose, in your journey. What have you been doing in the lead up to, yeah, founding Helios? Well, I went to school for web development in the year 2000. I was the, uh, the webmaster for Rogers Media, um, doing all the radio sites in Vancouver. And... It's funny because I just two months ago, I got, all right, I'm going to try and sum this up. It, that was the last paid property gig where I had medical insurance. And I went and saw this guy play music. His name was Bonnie Prince Billy, Will Oldham. And I'm sitting at my desk and everyone else in the radio stations worried about their job every few months when the ratings would come out. And I was like, this job is too secure. And after seeing Will Oldham, I was like, how does that guy get to tour and make music and, you know, and live that life? And a friend of mine was like, you'll figure it out. So I'm having my coffee. It's the start of the next morning. I'm like, man, I'm never going to be able to leave this job. It's, it's too safe. Sure enough, the phone rings, the universe called. They're like, hey, can you come down to, you know, HR? Uh, we, we need to talk to you about your gig. And... Basically, they paid me to go away. My job was now done, not not done out of Vancouver. Anyhow, from that moment, um, you know, I recorded my first record, started a record label to put that out. We ended up putting out about 50 records for a number of different bands. And just last month, I got to sit down at Will Oldham's dinner table in Louisville, Kentucky, and tell him that story. But he set me on a path of music. And uh, and here we are. Yeah, and it's like uh, you've got a, a long and rich uh, musical history. I, did I see that uh, you spent some time in like a, a punk DIY squat type situation somewhere in Europe? <laughs> wow, you were digging, Andy. I like it. I did. I lived at the legendary Chocoladen venue. They've had, they've had a band there every night for the last, since like 1991, when the wall came down, you know, in East Berlin there, you know, somebody put their elbow through that window and set up a venue and uh, I love that space. But it's funny because I used to book bands in there from Canada and, you know, years years go by, I ended up living in Berlin. And after I'd been there a few months, you know, somebody was like, oh, yeah, I've got a spot for you, blah, blah, blah. Turns out it's right above the stage at Chocolat. So every night I would go down and I mean, you know, Berlin has no curfew and the bartenders go home when they, hey, you guys feel like going home now? Yeah. I mean, basically, I, you know, I ran a label for years. I've played hundreds of shows. That's what got me to Berlin. Lately, I've been working with a bank on Broken Social Scene. You know, I've got a couple million streams on my stuff. And when I hit a million streams on Spotify for this one pop song called Tokyo, that was the moment that Helios was born because... There was no transparency. I had to make phone calls. I'm like, Fuck, I've been in music 20 years. Why do I actually have to go digging to see if we got any money out of this? Yeah, so that, I mean, that's essentially the, the crux of the matter then. So let's let's just dig into that. So um, I'd love to understand, yeah, I guess more of the reasoning what you're trying to do with Helios. But just maybe before we do that, explain a little bit of what the current streaming landscape looks like uh, if you like writer um because um most people that listen to this will probably have they'll have spotify or apple music or or one of the other um streaming platforms that is the dominant way um that people listen to music today and for the for the user it's yeah it's, there are you know advantages and disadvantages but overall you've got to say it's pretty amazing because i can just pick up my iphone pick up, open up my Spotify and I can't listen to everything, but I can probably find what I want to listen to. There's a, there's a lot of different artists, a lot of different songs for me, the consumer, the listener of music, it, it, it's a good thing, but there's more to the story, isn't there? I mean, I mean, obviously Spotify revolutionized the industry at the time. Uh, when I hit a million stream, I said, I was like, did we get paid on this? 
Sure enough, four four grand came in. And the label took half, this label 604. And me and the other producer got a thousand bucks each. Now, that's fine. But when you split a million streams, you know, four grand by a million streams, it came out to 0. 0.004 cents a stream. That's fair. But what gets interesting is, you know, what what kicked this off is when you do a quick search on Google of, you know, how many songs most people listen to in a month, you know, they say it's 25 hours of music listening is the average, right? It's 220 million people paying for that subscription. And, you know, 25 hours, the other th point they make is that most people listen, um, sorry, is the average song length is three, three minutes and 17 seconds. So if you split up 25 hours by three minutes and 17 seconds, it comes to 457 songs. Now, I know we got paid 0 0.004 cents per stream. Now, there's a little bit of a, on top of that, there's a publishing rate, et cetera. But let's just say 457 songs times 0 0.004 cents. You know, in a month, it's roughly 15 songs a day. It comes to a dollar, uh, sorry, it comes to a dollar 83. So the question was, where does, if you're paying 10 by a $10 subscription, where is the eight uh, other $8 and 17 cents go? If I know that on average, a dollar 83 is making it to a label. So that kicked off Helios. Now there's, you know, there's a lot of other, we can get into the weeds on where all the money's going, et cetera. But the initial idea on Helios was why doesn't that $10 subscription go to exactly who you listen to? Do you have a favorite band, Andy? Oh, wow, you're putting me on the spot now. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I have a favorite band. Because I, I, on my Spotify, I actually listen to a lot of podcasts. So, you know, I listen to a bit of Joe Rogan, Huberman, you know, the kind of the bro podcasters, things like that. If I am listening to music, I'll listen to everything from, you know, kind of 90s hip hop. I might listen to, you know, some Snoop, some Dr. Dre, Tupac, that kind of vibe. A little bit of indie rock stuff as well. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's just say, okay, let's let's use a, a, a little bit of a modest mouse, you know, the kind of indie band, similar profile maybe to Broken Social Scene, maybe not as well known. Okay, well, I love that you said all those. Um, it's funny because I just saw Modest Mouse play uh, last week in Toronto. They were opening yep. for uh, the Pixies. And I got to say, like, I haven't yep. put a Pixies record on in 25 years, but man, yep. that is a band that has aged well. Yes. Modest Mouse is great too, but I got to say the Pixies was like, this is arena rock and holds up amazingly well. And like Frank Black, it's funny because when he put out that teen Teenager of the Year album years ago, like he didn't look, I don't know, he looks like an anomaly, but the guy has aged so well. <laughs> he just looks cooler in his old age. But yeah, so I mean, where I was going with that was, you know, if you listen to one Modest Most track this month on Helios, they'll get 10 bucks rather than 0. Wow. 0. That's the point. If you listen to one Modest Mouse track and a Snoop track, it's five bucks and five bucks. That's the whole model. And, you know, likes are worth a little bit, comments a bit more, shares a bit more, and a 30, 30 second listening more is, you know, basically weighted a lot more. But it all goes into the algorithm. Everything you do on Helios goes into the algorithm and your $10 gets split according. Okay, we'll just explain that a little bit more in terms of the algorithm, because as I understand it, the, the, one of the problems with the Spotify algorithm, of course, you know, number one would be they, they don't really uh, explain how it works, but number two, because they don't explain how it works, they can really, they can manipulate it however they like. So I th I've seen like these figures, you know, kind of top 10 listenerships on Spotify or whatever that come out every week. And it seems like, yeah, Spotify itself is kind of controlling. There's a bit of pay for play going on behind the scenes. So they can kind of dictate who, which artists get suggested and, and listeners feeds for people to listen to next. And that's a really easy way for them to manipulate the, the listening figures. And if you're kind of outside of that, uh, you know, a small circle, then it's it's just exponentially harder to get any kind of algorithmic love. So, yeah, H Helios algorithm, explain. Well, I mean, the main thing is, if I only listen to Modest Mouse, Drake is going to get more of my 10 bucks. It just, that's just the way it works on Spotify with those algorithms. You know, everybody's fighting so hard to get on their editorial playlists and 
you know, then there's the automatic algorithms that, you know, it's, it's now Spotify. It's about the optics. You know, you send people to Spotify because, you know, a booking agent can see how many listens you've had in a month and they'll book on that. But the problem with it is that it can be manipulated. When you're paying out on a per stream rate, you can hit those, you know, those songs with bots and, you know, you can manipulate the numbers. And on top of that, you know, it's just not your 10 bucks isn't actually going to who you're listening to. They pull all streams and then they go, okay, Drake's had 10% of the listing this month. We'll give him 10% of, you know, what, what was earned, but it's not half. That's not real. If it's like, yes, people are listening to them, but they're getting spoon fed. Like Spotify just pushes music at you. I could go on, but <laughs> we wanted to do something that's more true to, you know, if you, if you're only listening to Dre at two o'clock that month, they should get paid. They should get your 10 bucks, you know? And it heavily also Spotify made a new, I don't know if you saw this at all, but like a couple months ago, they're like, we're changing the rates because, you know, major labels were like, we're not getting paid enough. So what they ended up doing was now you have to get a thousand streams on a song before you get paid anything on. So they've made it even harder for indie bands. And, you know, we're offering a, we're offering a, a different model. You know, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, these are, they all do a per stream rate. And you can, you know, you can say, well, this one pays an extra 0 0.003 cents a stream. We just want to get rid of that. We're, we're uh, I mean, it's partly why one of the things that, you know, we're, we're launching a token right now and we're raising money on, on the token, this rewards token. And it allows us to access, you know, different revenue streams than traditional music streaming. You know, we're also a social platform where, so all engagements logged. And, you know, I mean, you've got social media over here, Instagram made 33 billion last year from our engagement and selling our data. Then you've got music, the music streaming industry, which is not much more. It was like something like, depending on which stat you look at, around 40 billion for the entire music streaming industry right and then you've got crypto here. so we are a hybrid and if i need to reach into that pot that pot and bring it into music and reach into that pot and bring it in you know like we we have a feed not unlike an instagram but you know whatever we can do to get creators paid it's for creators by creators you know, and i mean yeah we're just we, we don't want to do something that's better we want to do something that's different yeah, uh, I, I like the sound of that. So the Helios, yeah, uh, it's like a, a social music uh, platform, social music experience. The idea is obviously that creators get paid more. Anyone can be a creator, but there's um, the users can get rewards as well, right? And I'm sure there's there's ways that users can connect with artists and there's, there's fan engagements and all that kind of stuff. So maybe just, yeah, talk us through what some of that how how some of that uh looks just to just step back for one second full catalog you know that's where you've got the same 100 billion songs on every platform it's your spotify title deezer's app music etc right now we've got dick huey as the head of licensing he was with spotify in their early days in the states helping to work to ingest that same 100 million tracks it's one of the things that like bothers me about most music NFT platforms is they don't have my favorite records. I want my mom to be able to listen to Lady in Red by Krista Burke, her favorite song. <laughs> now, and then there's user generated uh, platforms like SoundCloud, Bandcamp, YouTube in the traditional world, where you've got the Zoras and Sound, uh, Sound.xyz, et cetera, in the Web3 world. Now, as we're ingesting catalog, you can also, you can upload your music directly to Helios. So in that regard, it would be like a SoundCloud or a Bandcamp or a YouTube, but it actually ties in to Solana. You can mint an NFT of that music while you're uploading. Now, that also means that you could upload tickets to shows, you know, upload a, you know, a photo, make a hundred copies, boom. And we're partnering, we're sponsoring Pop Montreal uh, in the fall. That's our first like ticketing example of uh, Pretty Leos. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're a hybrid where 
It's same. It's full catalog meets user generated content, except that the user generated content is actually supercharged. Mm -hmm. When we look at that, all I was getting at is, so there's three different, couple of different revenue models here. One is any subscriptions that come in from Fiat, $10, right? Standard, that all goes back out to creators. Whatever comes in on your subscription goes through the algorithm as far as like what your engagement was that month and gets paid, paid out. We take a cut on sales. So if we're doing tickets or set, et cetera, it's 5%. And then, you know, because we have a social feed, um, you know, there'll be advertising, et cetera, for the freemium model. Now, on top of oh, that, so is, is, is the last thing is the rewards token. That's separate from all the fiat is the rewards token. If you're helping build the platform, in other words, if you're helping, uh, you know, if you're referring friends to Helios, you're making cool playlists, et cetera, you'll get rewarded in Heo token. And that's, you know, to build community and to build the platform itself, we can, you know, reward artist ambassadors, um, just do cool things with it. And, you know, with, with Heo, you'll be able to pay, you know, stake it on platform for subscription. So you won't have to pay any. Wow. So yeah, there's a lot going on then. So just to, um, simplify that, make sure I understand it and the listeners as well, I suppose <laughs> you're saying that the, the fiat, uh, income coming in, I suppose, from premium memberships and so on, all of that goes back out to the artists and then um, people can earn, they can earn, you know, points uh, through the Helios uh, re reward token through, yeah, engaging with the platform and doing stuff. Uh, and of course, the, the way that you guys or Helios, the platform makes money is just taking a cut of, yeah, the ticket sales and things like that. That's kind of the model, Ryder? Merch sales, NFT sales. Uh, essentially, it's like, you know, on that side of it, it's like, um, yeah, it ties into digital assets, but also tickets um, and, you know, advertising. But, you know, if, if uh, labels want to sponsor posts, et cetera, we can tie into that. So there is, you know, it's capitalizing on that social feed a little bit. Um, to cover all streams going to artists and paying out. For the freemium users, we are covering a basic 0 0.00. It looks like 0 0.003 per stream. So anybody who's even on the freemium, all that list, all those listens, we cover. Got it. All right. And so where are we in terms of the, I don't know, the, the product rollout um, or the, the user journey? You guys are in beta at the moment is is that correct how do you kind of describe you know where you are at at the moment on the helios a journey writer yeah so we've been working on this about just over three years now with a team of devs and last year we went live on solana saga phone and you know just in the last three weeks we got we went live on the apple app store uh, essentially in the last three months we you know, we had, we, we built a house with some cool tech in it and we built a new house to be able to scale and we're porting in code into that new house. And that was, you know, that went along with getting into the Apple app store and uh, doing all that. So right now it's the most basic version, but build is going up tonight. You'll be able to upload music to again. And uh, yeah, essentially next week we're soft launching with the new app, but you know, September, we should have by, by late September is what we're looking at as full launch with full catalog. Yeah. But right now, you know, it's, uh, it's, it feels awesome to be like not having to use test flight, which is Apple's like beta, beta testing software. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's a journey. These things I, I wanted to be able to say, ah, oh, we're live obviously a year ago, uh, but you know, there's a dozen people working on this right now. And, you know, it's picking up steam. We've got some cool stuff coming up. So how do you differentiate between, because, you know, it's cool to launch on the Solana phone and it's cool to be able to, you know, offer your users NFTs and things like that. Um, but how do you kind of differentiate between, I suppose, like crypto native users and then just, you know, the, the wider world of the billions of other people who just want to listen to music and and talk about it with their friends and engage with artists and maybe out of that they'll start to learn about blockchain and get some nfts as well but they come into it as music fans first i, I guess what i'm saying is you know who who is helios 
aimed at rider? I'm sure there are different kind of customer target market That's segments it. and so on, but yeah, who is it aimed at? That's a great question. You know, when, when Solana saga hit, when that saga, when bonk, suddenly people were like, holy shit, I've got $600 worth of bonk on the phone. Like, you know, one of their, the lead devs for Solana is one of our investors, Stephen Lucier. So we were building with, with Solana in mind, being able to mint NFTs on the phone right from the start. When Bonk hit and suddenly that phone, you know, sold out in one day, it sold out because of projects airdropping to the phone, right? Like, you know, and suddenly it was like, when I open up my saga, it's like, I've got $2,500 worth of crypto from projects that have just come to that phone. And I love that. It's become a hub for crypto. So, <laughs> but that the moment that that December 15th, when the saga sold out, it was like, okay, I'm, you know, the EO token's been on the roadmap for a while. Let's just do it now. Let's get her going. So to answer your question, the first step is, you know, we're doing quests on Helios, you know, like refer people to the platform, et cetera, to, to get your airdrop allocation up. So the first targets are that niche market, which are the DGENs and the crypto kids of which I'm a part of. And the first, you know, and partly because Doing this FIO token allows us to open the doors to get a bit of treasury to actually take on the Spotify's and the titles and the Deezers, right? So we're tying into, we are accessing, you know, it's one of the things that differentiates us from those platforms is that we can have a rewards token. So the first step is, you know, these air, the airdrop that's coming out next month and rewarding users that way. Now that's to help us build into the you know the bigger public sphere of music lovers at the end of the day my mission is to get musicians paid to get creators paid right as a musician i mean it's just there's no obvious everyone from neil young to even taylor swift or musicians of all levels are you know a, a little disgruntled by the current system so yes like the you know the djs are our first niche market but like music lovers you know i want my mom to be able to go on to helios and not have to connect a wallet you can connect a wallet to transfer nfts that you've purchased etc um but for most people you know they don't need to know anything about web3 or wallets etc to be able to enjoy helios so yeah i mean that's that's our mission is to create a music streaming platform that you know where your favorite artists are but also the ties into, you know, the web three community. Makes a lot of sense, Ryder. And, you know, you talked about how, you know, music artists of all sizes from, you know, small independent artists right through to your Neil Young's, even your Taylor Swift's and everything in between are obviously, you know, a little bit frustrated at what's going on at the moment. Because the way that music artists at the moment, they don't really earn from streaming sites the way especially if you're just kind of starting out or or a kind of yeah in the middle somewhere you have to go you have to be on tour a lot and playing gigs um selling merchandise just to keep some revenue coming in so i'm sure um yeah like do you do you get the sense that music artists are are looking at what comes after something like spotify and they're they're maybe looking at you know the kind of things that web3 can unlock via something like helios is the music are the music artists ready for this i mean that's a great question because most artists i know are so slammed just trying to keep like trying to keep it together like if they you know if they're committed to doing music full time it is a journey. Like if you're getting 12 people in a bus, like broke the social scene, it's tough to keep everybody, you know, healthy and keep this bus going down the road to hit your, like say a thousand true fans. Like you can get your thousand true fans in each city, but like it, I can, it is a mission. <laughs> Keeping everybody sane and to the next, but you know, to the next show, it's a lot. It takes a lot of like, it takes a lot of work to do. And you know, the musicians who aren't touring, even have to spend so much time on social media and all these platforms, Instagram, where you get nothing, Spotify, where you get a little bit, um, you know, trying to build engagement and it feels very, you know, it's the return on investment often feels futile. So 
do I think that artists are like, you know, are they looking for the next thing? A lot of them feel overwhelmed and are not looking for new platforms. But what I can't wait for is for our, you know, there was a time when Justin Bieber, <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to talk about Justin Bieber, but I am. We love you, Justin, as a Canadian. But there was a time when, you know, in like 2008, where he built his community as a kid on YouTube, on this platform. I can't wait till, you know, some kid in Missouri uses Helios and actually gets paid 50 bucks, you know, on his, at the end of the month from like, you know, utilizing and building his audience and community on Helios um, or more than 50 bucks. I, I'm just thinking about uh, Justin from Twitch talking about the first time they had a kid make 50 bucks on gaming. It was like, ah, we have a platform. But I, you know, I love that, you know, I, I can't wait till, I'm not trying to win everybody over, you know, right now. It's like creating an amazing space for new artists to make an impact and to build a community and to get paid for it. So yep. that was a long-winded way of saying, are artists ready to have a new platform? Most of them probably know. They, they're, you know, they're doing all they can just to like pay the rent. But yeah, it that's not to say that we're, uh, you know, They'll come over when they see the, the results posted. And it's uh, very well said. And that's such a great point. You know, think back to the likes of, yeah, Justin Bieber, uh, Beast, all these kind of guys that kind of were smart enough or savvy enough, I guess, to kind of lock on to YouTube early and then, and just, then just kind of ride the, the growing wave of YouTube. And, of course, that will happen with, with Web3. As Web3 matures, um, platforms like Helios, if artists are smart enough and savvy enough to get in early and ride that kind of wave, those same opportunities will be there. So look, Ryder, as we finish up this part of the podcast, then for people listening, uh, they want to get involved, be an early adopter of Helios, um, look at the token, look at what they can do on the platform. Um, what should they do? Where should they go? We're at Helios.party. And yeah, this is a brand new baby. We would love it. You know, Helios Party is the is the uh, x.com uh, link. Helios Party is on Instagram. And we're just opening the doors. So, you know, please come. Please be one of the first beta testers on this and get rewarded in Helio for doing so. And yeah, you know, we 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 uh, we we'd love to welcome you guys and get your feedback. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of you know, it's this weekly build is going up for the next foreseeable future as we get it cooking here. I love it. Let's get it cooking. <laughs> right. Well, speaking, speaking of, Ryder, I think um, it's time to start to wrap up the podcast. And the way we do that is by running you through the very famous crypto conversation hot take round. Are you up for it? Of course. Also, hey, I just wanted to mention one more thing. You mentioned Snoop and Dre and Tupac. And yeah. we've actually got uh, we've we've got Arabian Prince from NWA is now on our team. Old school ninety right? six <laughs> straight out of Compton. I'm very amazing. Excited, very excited to have him working on this. He's like he is in his own words, a Willy Wonka and just a really creative innovative dude who's had his hands in so many different projects so like uh we're very grateful to have him on the team shout out to the arabian prince shout out to nwa funnily enough writer like i have a i have a 13 year old son right and it's fascinating watching him develop his music tastes uh, as much as they're probably they're influenced by his parents certainly but also you know his peers in the wider world he uh covered nwa and he he loves a bit of nwa he loves uh, eminem um, listens to a book, bit of dr dre much more into kind of old school hip-hop than I suppose, you know, he hasn't really caught up to what is happening in current hip hop, but you know, the, the classics, your Dr. Dre's, Eminem's, NWA, he's all about it. <laughs> it must be so cool to see, you know, to see your son growing through these and getting into these phases of places that you've been over the years and uh, yeah, to rediscover music through his, through his eyes, through his ears. Hundred cool. percent. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. All right. Well, let's let's finish it off. I said we'd do the crypto conversation hot take round, so we'll do that, Ryder. I'm just going to run some questions at you. I just want you to give me your honest 
quick rapid fire kind of hot take style answers question one for you bit of a funny one but let's see what you have to say it is uh where would you say that you sit on the bitcoin maximalist to multi-chain opportunist spectrum i'm not a bitcoin maximalist i do love bitcoin beach el zante it's been i've been three times over the last six years from before it was dubbed bitcoin beach so it's hilarious. I'm I'm a Solana Mac. I mean, not a Maxi, but like I love what Solana's yeah. doing. I love the you know the utility. I love everything that's happening in that space. Fucking shout out to Raj and Toli. Like they built an incredible, incredible community. And the Solana Breakpoint events that happened in October, awesome. But yeah, I'm not a Bitcoin Maxi. Like I think yeah. it's it obviously it's the OG. We have it to thank for everything else. But yeah. Yep. No, very well said. All right. Well, what would you say, Ryder, is your firmest conviction crypto opinion? Heo to the moon. You know, aside from that, yeah, I love everything in Solana, you know. Uh, obviously, we're building on Solana and we're, you know, there was a moment about a year ago, year and a half ago, where people are like, you should take Solana off the deck. And I was like, well, that. So yeah, Solana. Yeah. I love it. All right. Look, writer Bill Gates famously said that, that we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. So 10 years time, you know, Web3 on Solana, Helios, Helios, Helios is, is mature. 10 years time, what does the music platform of the future look like? Great question. I think there's a couple of things there. One, as far as the music stream platform of the future, I mean... It's funny because we're building for, you know, phones right now in the future. Like, I can't wait till, you know, I think it's going to be the delivery mechanism will be different. I think we'll probably still be listening to our, you know, uh, Dre's and Tupac and everything else. The delivery mechanism will probably be different. I, you know, I bought the, the Quest a couple of years ago because as we're sitting on catalog and content and all this, you know, I'm I'm curious about how it moves into the future. Obviously, those headsets are too bulky at the moment. But yeah, I mean, and then as far as like blockchain, I don't think, I think it's just going to be seamless. It's not going to be like, oh, we're only on Bitcoin or it's only on Ethereum or Solana. I see that all kind of going away, like bridging in really unique ways. And music, I mean, oh, in 10 years, I hope people can, you know, can can survive as creators and we're working on being part of that solution and you know music's not going anywhere but you know if people can't afford to be musicians you're gonna get lower quality music it's just how it's going and obviously ai and this stuff you know we need to incentivize the brightest minds to be in music that mm -hmm. partly comes from like incentivization <laughs> it's like yeah you gotta be able to pay Pay your rent. Not easy to do in Canada right now. Hundred percent. All right. Well, let's finish this off, Ryder. The final question for you. Bit of a curveball, but again, we'll see what you have to say. It is: What is your favorite science fiction? A book, film, or TV show? Back to the Future. Oh, that is a great answer. Great answer. Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox. When did back, was that like 1984? I'm just going to quickly. Yeah, I think it was what, 3? 1985, yeah. 1985, Back to the Future, yeah. Weird science. I, I haven't been reading it much lately, I'll be honest. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and, uh, you know, science fiction. I like sticking my head in the universe, in the like can of paint that is technology and throwing it around just, just to see it. how it feels. So, you know, I feel like we're more living in it than reading about it at the moment. Yeah, well, look, we, we certainly are. And that's why we sometimes you need to just switch off from the kind of dystopian AI future that we are rapidly um, starting to find ourselves in and just go back to a good old fashioned family sci-fi movie like Back to the Future. Again, one more time, just tell them how people can engage with Helios. What should they do? Where should they go? Andy, thank you so much for having me on. Brave new coin to the moon. And uh, you can follow us. Helios.party is the website. Helios Party is Twitter. Yeah. And again, it's brand new, baby. We'd love to have any and all of you on board to help us build for the future. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryder. All the best. And bye for now. Annie, thank you so much.